Hello folks, it's George Leoniak and welcome to New Geometry. Today we're going to be doing a very quick drawing. I believe it's probably maybe the fastest way to draw an icosahedron in the seat of life. Totally accurate icosahedron. Very simple method. I think you probably could be do, able to do it in about 10 minutes or less. And uh, another announcement before I jump over to sharing the screen is uh, I did a video with Charlie Zeiss about the Russian pyramids. It was meant to be a new conversation for this channel. Luckily, uh, Charlie had the recording. It's over at his channel in the new conversation section in the playlist. If you're interested in the Russian pyramid and the sacred geometry that I've, some of it that I've been discovering, which I'll be sharing much more in the future, check that video out. So um, let's see, maybe I'll just keep you in suspense. I won't show the drawing just yet or talk about the forms and how we do it. So let's jump over to sharing the iPad screen so we can do this drawing and see how easy it is to construct this awesome icosahedron. It relates to a video that I'm gonna put in the description called 10 New Sacred Geometry Discoveries That You Don't Wanna Miss all contained within a single flower of life. So as we know, the flower of life, um, many of us are familiar with that pattern of the uh, concentric circles, uh, the, the circle pattern, uh, six around one and up to 19 circles and extending on further. Um, this is all gonna be done with the initial seed of life setup. And then we're going to just, um, <clears throat> go inside the central petals of the flower. So let's just go along. I mean, if you have the drawing material with you, let's just do it because I think you can follow along with this instruction quite easily. You don't have to draw any line at all. We're just gonna start drawing um, a circle. Now you can do this circle any size diameter that you want. Um, you don't even have to really draw the remaining six circles to their fullest extent. You can just do little slash marks. So if you want to make this drawing big, just go for it. I'm going to pick roughly, um, try to get that centered up for you a little bit. Okay. Just put your compass needle anywhere on the circumference of the first circle. And that makes these intersection marks here along the other circle. And we're just going to work our way around doing the seed of life, those six circles around one. Now, like I said, all you'd need really is just this flower. So if you wanted to just do the slash marks around the outside circumference of your middle circle, let's give that a color. We'll make it blue. Uh, you could have easily just done that. Now we're, we're ready for our ruler. Um, we're going to add one more circle to this, and that will be it. It's not even a golden ratio circle that we're going to add to it. It's going to be half the diameter of the large circle. So let's draw in. Uh, we're going to talk about this in terms of the uh, structural geometry that we're doing. Let's first take our pencil and uh, just draw in. Whoops, get the pencil going. Just draw in from petal tip to petal tip. Just extend those lines just so we have those six directions and three lines of axes laid out. So uh, the next step, I'm gonna to switch to red because we're gonna visualize this construction as if it's all within a tetrahedron, okay? Let me straighten up my drawing a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we're straightening up the drawing. We're gonna make this tetrahedron, whoops. We're gonna straighten up the tetrahedron. Oh, we're, gonna, we're gonna draw the tetrahedron. So just draw in what basically looks like a triangle. Now let's try, this triangle is going to have, be a tetrahedron. It's gonna be facing down. And that means I'm just gonna put in these light dotted lines. You don't really need to do this for the drawing, but just so you know, this is tetrahedron and we're really just looking at the base of it, right? So we, we're looking at the bottom of a tetrahedron, which essentially just looks like a equilateral triangle, but we've got the point back there. So we're going to see inside of this. And the next step is let's draw that circle in. So put your compass back on the center and you should be able to draw a circle that's going to touch all three of those 
faces. Now, this isn't a sphere that's contained with inside this tetrahedron. It's going to help us with the setup of our drawing. Um, but just put that circle in because we're going to need those points in, in a little bit. OK, next up, uh, let's, uh, let's go and uh, actually, you know, I don't, even, I don't even think you need a circle, but let's leave it there for a second anyway. Um, that's for a different setup, but uh, we'll, we'll find out here in just a moment. So the next thing is we want to put a, uh, another triangle. Whoops, switch back to this. Another triangle. Now this is going to be corresponding to the octahedron triangular face that would be at the bottom of the form. So pretty much on the another equilateral triangle fitting inside. I mean, this is such a uh, classic drawing. And in fact, you know what? We, yeah, yeah, we did need a circle. You'll see why. Um, so yeah, we put this in here, the purple triangle. Now this is so easy because from this, we're gonna get our icosahedron. And now in the video that I did on the 10 new discoveries, um, which I did find out there was a method that was on cut the knot site for producing phi ratio that came about this in a very, different way that didn't show you the ease of this, but this is a golden ratio. If I just drop in a red line here in the middle, at that little section of this petal that gets cut by the line, that's golden ratio. So if this purple segment to the red segment, that would be one and 0.618, right? So that's a golden ratio division. So we're gonna do some fun stuff with this now. And we're gonna put another triangle in there, a blue one, anchored on the petal itself, not on the line. We are gonna rotate this next triangle just uh, off the six, the, the three lines, the dotted lines uh, that I have here. Let's just go up from the dotted line and down over here. And then we're just gonna skip over to the vertical line, just go one to the left. And we've drawn in another equilateral triangle that's fitting into that triangle. Now that triangle is an icosahedron face. In fact, we could do Coxeter's whole stellation diagram. Please check out the other video that I'm describing, the 10 new discoveries you don't wanna miss. I know a lot of people have missed them so far because there's not a lot of views, but this is gonna be the simplest way right here, which is not in that video to construct a perfect golden ratio version of the icosahedron all within the heart of the center of the sacred geometry design. So next up, how are we gonna draw on the rest of the uh, icosahedron? Well, let's, uh, we don't need to draw, we need to draw in the rest of the uh, octahedron. And I'll do this with a slightly lighter line. Let's switch back to purple and let's make that, that face of that one a little bit smaller too. So our, our icosahedron really stands out. So we need to draw in a hexagon and that hexagon is going to be in that circle. Now, of course, that's why we needed the circle. So I'm glad we have it in there because we're just going to work our way around and picture in your mind's eye that this tetrahedron, well, that's one of the little triangles that are just like in a star tetrahedron. There's an octahedron in the middle of this. And that is the, the little tetrahedrons are, you know, adhering to the faces of the octahedron, only three of them. If you do the other, I mean, four of them, if you do the other four faces, well, then you would get the full on uh, a little star tetrahedron here that we call. Okay. So uh, the next thing we're going to do here is um, this is the, the little bit of the nifty part is we've got to create, um, we need to create a triangle, a hexagon, and another series of triangles that are going to relate to our blue triangle in the middle. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler at this point and lay it out at the center of your drawing and extend the line through the point, uh, the, the, the tip of the, the vertice of the triangle here, okay, through that point. And it's going to go through the base. And it's going to go all the way through that hexagon. Now try to line this up as best as you can. And for this, we're just going to make little uh, points. We'll make these blue points. We'll make them black, black points at the top and the bottom. 
And we're gonna do this first all the way around, okay? So just get those points on that purple hexagon. Next up, let's just lay our ruler out. Um, going the other way, lay the ruler out at center again through the point at the bottom of the triangle over here, the central triangle, and lay out another point on the hexagon and another point on the hexagon. Next up, let's uh, go and do this one more time. Points once again here and here on the purple uh, hexagon. Okay, well now that allowed us to draw in a new uh, hexagon. And from this view, the Let's take off the bold um, points and make our line thicker again. So this, from this view of the icosahedron, it will also look like it's a top-down uh, perspective of the form. So where's a little icosahedron here? Here's one. So this is going to be kind of how we're looking at it, because as I said in some of the other videos, there's the outline of a hexagon with the triangle in the middle. It would look like it has six sides around. Um, the important part, it's gonna have this little bend in it. It's not gonna be an equilateral triangle. And it also is has to reorient. It can't fit into, it can't be the same orientation as the other equilateral triangles if it's properly nested in holding relationships to the other forms it can't follow the equilateral triangles that we see here. Thankfully, the seed of life does do this for us. So let's draw in that other, between those points we just did, let's go ahead and draw in that hexagon from those points. So just uh, work your way around. Come on, gotta get in a little closer. So there we go. We have those nice little hexagon rotated in there. Now we're, we're pretty much done now. Of course, it's going to take a little bit longer than 10 minutes with me talking so much. But um, let the, now you know, do this drawing on your own. I timed myself to do it. It took me eight minutes to do. Um, and I'll show you the drawing afterwards. So let's start connecting some dots. So from the uh, outer hexagon here, of the blue one we just did in the purple, let's go ahead and connect back to the equilateral triangle that's on the inside, uh, the rotated one. And I think I better change the colors of all these so you can see it maybe a little bit better. Purple and blue are not standing out. I'll just go with black for the icosahedron. Okay. This is what we've got going on so far. Perfect. Um, now, this is where, uh, you know, as I've often said, Metatron's cube tends to just go straight across. And, uh, but you can see that there's gonna be golden ratio proportion here between the circle that is uh, around the hexagon and that center triangle. So we can't just draw a straight line across. That would be another octahedron. So what we wanna do is, go from the bottom left location of this hexagon towards the center point of the triangle and just frame that in from those two locations. Then go from the top to the side point triangle and back to the bottom right hand side. And then we just have to drop in the bottom and that will be it. So now let's see, let's do a little test here just so we can make sure this is an accurate one. Now, as you can see, it's uh, nested with inside the icosahedron, which I'm about to show you um, as well. This would be just like we see it here in this, uh, the octahedron, the icosahedron is ne nested in this octahedron. So we're actually looking at it very much just like I'm holding in this picture, I mean, in the zone tool model, this slight teal colored big triangle you see, well, that is the octahedron. I could make the tetrahedron off of this. I'd be a lot more pieces, but of course here is our blue um, 
icosahedron. Now we want to check this all out and I'll show you that model at the end too. Let's check it out. And the way we can do this to make sure that this is going to hold its perspective through this shift, it's not a perspective drawing. It's a um, orthographic drawing that's going to take away perspective in the drawing to keep all the dimensions um, uh, accurate to what it would be like as if this pentagon that I just drew here, pretend that that is a, uh, let's make it a red pentagon that I just drew up here. Let's pretend that that pentagon is uh, just this same one that I just did here. It's just rotated up. Now we were just going to just double, do a double check to make sure that the edge length is the same or the, the cross uh, of the star, the pentagram star that would be in there would be the same as if it were rotated down. And as you can see, the two light up blue. Now they're both sharing the same base of the pentagon because I built that pentagon off of the edge of the equilateral triangle, right? So this means that the whole thing is in phi proportion um, all those pentagram faces, which is going to allow us to draw in the stellations of the forms properly and all those things. Now, in a lot of my other videos, I draw this in what I call the golden circle seat of life, which puts the uh, hexagon of the icosahedron straight on and not tilted. It's a little bit easier way to work with the stellation process at this point, but this is probably the fastest method that I've encountered or that's come to me in my discoveries of working with the forms and the geometry that can easily be done in about 10 minutes. So um, let's back out of this slideshow, uh, or not the slideshow, the, the drawing app here. I don't have any slides for you today. Um, I'm just going to show the uh, form up close. Now, there it is again with the big equilateral triangle of the octahedron. Of course, it's got all the other nested platonics down in it, all the way down to another little icosahedron in, octahedron in the middle, which would also have an icosahedron. And in the Russian pyramid video, if you go check that out, the scaling ratio between the little octahedron to the large one is phi cubed. That's a very important number. The Russian pyramid is going to be part of this geometry. I'm just prepping you up for the exciting videos of sacred geometry in relationship to the nesting of the platonics and all those forms relating to the Russian pyramid. Um, here's my drawing that I did just before. And I hope that this one was a fun one for you. And um, on my Patreon, I do a live drawing session similar to these. So check out the Patreon that will also be in the links. And if you wanna take it a full step further and learn a lot of new techniques and uh, from basic to advanced, check out the new geometry apprenticeship. One of those will be coming up in either January or February. So check the website out for that. And please feel free to leave comments to how you enjoyed this method. But there is my um, icosahedron in black at the beginning. Let's turn it the way we had it in our drawing. There it is as we've done it. And there's the tetrahedron with the octahedron and the icosahedron all right within one golden flower. And that is amazing that we don't have to draw so many circles to do that. Um, you can do it in one, you can expand this whole thing, do one big circle if you wanted to, and just, you know, get the hexagon outline and you're good to go. All right, everyone, we'll have fun with that. And check out that video that Charlie Zeese and I did on the Russian pyramids. Looking forward to being back with a lot more soon. And please subscribe to the channel. Have a great rest of your day. Much love and peace. See you later.